Okay, here we go. I recently returned from a road trip, that's why there was no content for a while. It was fun, but now I'm back to making videos. And today, I want to look at what I consider to be the most fascinating digital robbery in all of history. Yes, it's crypto. I know that not everyone is super invested or enthusiastic about crypto topics, but for this one, I ask that you take just a couple of minutes and hear me out, because it's absolutely hilarious. Now, some people will probably be thinking, how could this possibly be interesting? Decentralized finance and blockchain technology is just signals and computer code. It's horribly boring. And yes, they would be right, but far from a typical hack, today's video is about one of the most unique transitions from physical to digital that I have ever personally seen. To begin, in a roundabout way, I want to paint a mental picture. It's the weekend. You wake up, you brush your teeth, you eat your breakfast, and you decide to go to the mall. In that mall, there are a bunch of stores, but out of the corner of your eye, you see a big crowd running towards one store in particular. It's a jewelry store, or a Gucci store, or some kind of high-value item store, with fancy display cases and a lot of money in the vault. But people are running in, and then running out, with their arms covered in diamonds and expensive items and cash. Now, there are guards, a lot of them, and security guards, and locks, and everything you would typically picture for a store like this one, but the people are just running up to them, and being let in whenever they want, wherever they want. Another thing, all these people who are now effectively being allowed to loot this jewelry store are wearing the same exact face mask. And there's a massive pile of those face masks over on the side, what seems like an infinite number just next to the store. More and more people are walking up, putting on a mask, and then walking right through the store's security measures to grab thousands of dollars worth of goods, and then walking away like nothing ever happened. You decide to try it for yourself, and yes, as soon as you put on the mask, you can just go take whatever you want. In a couple of hours, the store is totally cleaned out, barren shelves, nothing left. There's quite literally absolutely nothing there. And in a technical sense, the place got robbed, but it didn't really get robbed. It just created a massive non-stop free-for-all where anyone who wanted money and wore a particular mask could just grab it. That's obviously an imperfect analogy, but it's kind of like what happened to the Nomad Bridge, except what happened to Nomad was far, far worse. I'm going to simplify this, the technical aspect at least, because precisely how the code was exploited doesn't actually matter. What happened is what matters. Basically, the Nomad Bridge is a system where crypto is secured in a smart contract on one chain and then reissued as a wrapped version on a different chain. Effectively, you send something to a vault, a token, collateral, whatever it is, it gets locked up there, and then you get back a proxy version. This allows for some key interactions between different ecosystems. As an example, if you own Bitcoin, the largest and most high-profile crypto in existence right now, but you want to participate in the Ethereum ecosystem, which is separate, without selling the Bitcoin in order to do so and being subjected to fees and price volatility, stuff like that, you can use a bridge. Send your Bitcoin to a place, get back a proxy token, a wrapped alternative token, and use that proxy to now engage with other areas of crypto, while not being forced to actually sell your original Bitcoin. In theory, it's very, very useful. It creates interoperability in the space, but in reality, it's incredibly risky. Enter Nomad. This is what the interface looks like right now. Notice how it says bridging unavailable. We'll discuss why in just a second. It doesn't have every crypto, not by a long shot, but it had a few options, and it had about $200 million under management, and it was one of the many bridge protocols that were widely used by the crypto community at large. Sounds good, right? <laughs> no. On August 1st, 2022, something happened. Identified now as an issue that cropped up during a routine upgrade, the Nomad team enabled 0x00 as the trusted root. Now, I don't even fully understand the coding aspect myself in particular, so I'll try to be delicate here and make sure everyone knows that I might be wrong on some of the specific details, but that simple change, from what I understand, made it so that messages were auto-proving. To boil it down to its most basic explanation, they accidentally made it so that you could just take money out of the bridge for free, and what resulted was absolute chaos. For 165 minutes, more and more people began to pull money out. Now, when I say this, I want to be extremely clear that it is, in a very literal sense, true. The way the exploit worked made it so that everyone who found out about what was happening, with even a modicum of experience, like basically none, could copy and paste the original transaction call data and just join right in. Control C, Control V, copy, paste, then switch the final address to yours, and you would be withdrawing millions of dollars from a locked vault for free. Those two to three hours, total chaos. Random people were tapping into a nearly $200 million open door vault and just pulling money out hand over fist. 
Some people claimed it was an accident, which is kind of hilarious and I don't buy it, but whatever. Some said they would return the money. Some were frantically trying to steal it first so that they could protect the funds. Again, I don't know if I buy that, but some people probably did that and it was true. And some were just doing it for the fuck of it. A frantic, growing mob of users drained almost $200 million from Nomad in less than three hours, leaving the bridge with nothing. But here's the real kicker. Decentralized finance, for the most part, is not decentralized. Networks like Celsius, exchanges like Coinbase or Binance, all of the major players here are centralized entities that frame the space as a decentralized ecosystem. This heist? It was actually decentralized. Once the original transaction went through, the floodgates were wide open. Anyone in the world could just copy and paste a few lines of code and pull out money. So far, roughly 300 wallets have been identified, I think, and the official stance of Nomad is that they are working with law enforcement to recover the funds, but that's a crock of shit. This wasn't a hack, actually. This was an exploit. And even then, nothing was technically breached. No one on the outside broke the code. No one on the outside violated a law. They just took advantage of what the developers had created as a functional ecosystem. Nomad isn't and probably shouldn't get shit for help because they're not insured. They aren't backed by the government, they aren't regulated by the SEC, they're not compliant or supported or protected by any of the systems that financial infrastructure needs in order to function. What's worse, according to Quantstamp, who conducted audits of Nomad code changes, this exploit became available because Nomad inserted unaudited additions within their own update. This could have been prevented, no joke, with just a little bit more testing. Right, because the auditing process is basically they create an update and then audit it to make sure it's safe, which they then added stuff that had not been audited and it wasn't safe, go figure. It could have been it could have been caught, but instead they opened up their entire vault of funds to whoever in the world wanted a piece, created a feeding frenzy, and got completely wiped out. Now they crawl on hands and knees to the government for help. <laughs> it's incredible. In April of 2022, less than three months before their downfall, Nomad raised $22 million of seed funding for their Security First platform. Published on Medium, they said, quote, Our goal with Nomad is to provide a security first interoperability solution that can be deployed today. We believe in the vision of fully trustless bridges, but also realize that the market won't wait for them to arrive. People want to bridge now, and we need to enable them to do it safely. As such, Nomad is designed around principles, <laughs> principles that prioritize safety, simplicity, and our users, end quote. Less than three months later, they had pushed through an update with improper and inadequate testing that allowed for a mob-style feeding frenzy and lost everything. Just a couple of days before it all fell apart, Nomad was announcing more strategic capital partnerships with Coinbase and OpenSea, once again referring to itself and being referred to as a security-first cross-chain messaging protocol. Some of the core tenants and descriptive buzzwords that Nomad employed time and time again were security and safety. But now they have made history as an example of just how badly and quickly and hilariously a platform can fail. Crypto really does create new things. In this case, it created a decentralized crowd of digital looters who made off with nine figures. It's the most fascinating digital heist in history, but incredibly, it's not even close to being the biggest. In February, the Wormhole Bridge was hacked, losing over $300 million. In March, <laughs> in February, March, right like one month later, the Ronin Bridge was hacked, losing $650 million. In June, the Harmony Bridge was hacked and lost $100 million more. And now, at the beginning of August, right around the end of July, the Nomad Bridge has been looted for yet another $200 million more. That's well over a billion dollars that has been stolen or lost just from bridges in less than six months. And none of it is being backed by a governing body, supported by a stronger infrastructure, or regulated with even a hint of safety or compliance standards. Because yay crypto. Now, it's possible that Nomad will get back some of the money from white hat exploiters who only intended to stop the bleeding. It's possible that they will track down more or get loans or work through the turbulence in some way or another. But right now, it has to be said that having your money in bridge protocols is the stupidest possible thing that you could ever do. Take it out. Stop using them. Stop participating in a degenerate financial system that is neither safe nor honest lacks all accountability, and has become so incredibly overrun with scams and fraudulent practices, it is now impossible to navigate without crippling risk.
Nomad, in my opinion, is the most fascinating heist in financial history because it straight up allowed Control C and Control V on a random nobody's keyboard across the world to make them a millionaire instantaneously. Word spread across the internet like wildfire, and all around the globe people were able to gain financial freedom, just not in the way that crypto fans might have pictured. They got that financial freedom by walking away with a whole bunch of mo funny money that wasn't theirs because the security-first platform developers had blatantly ignored common-sense security precautions, pushed out a code update that turned them into a smashed-open DeFi piggy bank, and got cleaned out. Obviously, I do feel bad for the people that have now lost a bunch of money, but I cannot stop myself from laughing at all this. It's hilarious, and it gets funnier every single time, because people just keep throwing money at this shit. They keep losing that money to the most absurd circumstances, and the merry-go-round continues to spin day in and day out with a clamoring horde of greedy passengers. Ultimately, hopefully, this industry will either get regulated or die. But right now we are faced with endless entertainment as history is made in the most ridiculous ways possible. That's it though. Perhaps there is another digital heist that would prove to be more fascinating or entertaining, but this was my pick for the best one yet. If you want to support the channel, there are links down below. Locals, Patreon, a YouTube alternative, another creator to check out, merch, social media, etc, etc. But I'll cut it there and stop rambling. As always, thank you all for watching, and have a nice night.